hello welcome to this lesson on mechanics we are going to talk about the aspect of mechanics called statics by the time we end this lesson you will be able to distinguish between a scalar and a vector quantity and also you should be able to resolve forces acting at a point so let's begin by looking at the differences between a scalar and a vector so scalars have only size then vectors have size and direction you know this from your integrated science or general science definitions a scalar has no direction it is just an amount of something like the mass of a sack of rice or a sack of gary then we have a vector which has magnitude and direction the magnitude is the size so like the speed in the direction of a car in motion then force and velocity are both vectors that means that we need to know which way we are going or which way the force is going as well as how big the force is so let's look at some examples of scalars we have mass then we have temperature time length we have speed then we have energy all these are examples of scalars for vectors we have displacement velocity then we also have force which includes weight have acceleration so a velocity of 50 meters per second in a direction of 60 degrees is a velocity vector and we write it as 50 meters per second then the direction so the magnitude is 50 meters per second then the direction is 60. So an acceleration vector we have 10 meters per second then 30 degrees as a direction so all these are vectors and in writing it as a coordinate we write the magnitude first and direction second so we have another example here this is a force vector the magnitude is 5 newton and the direction is 40 degrees oh that's the bearing the bearing is 40 degrees magnitude bearing form so resolving coplanar forces acting at a point coplanar it means they are in the same plane co same plane planar coplanar forces acting at a point so resolving a force means we are splitting the force into its components so we have the x component or the horizontal component x component then we have the vertical component or the y component so if you see fv it's not anything it means the vertical component or the y component so some may write it as fx or fy so it means the y component and the x component of the force so if we apply a force that moves these objects upward we have a movement in the horizontal direction as well as the vertical direction so we have an angle that the force is making with the horizontal and we can resolve this force meaning that we can split it into the horizontal and the vertical component by using trigonometry we know the cosine of this angle is adjacent over hypotenuse so adjacent over hypotenuse so by change of subjects we found the 
x component or the horizontal component to be the magnitude of the force times the cosine of the angle that it makes with the horizontal axis then similarly sine of the angle will give us this y component so the horizontal component is given by the magnitude of the force times the cosine of the angle then the y component is given by magnitude of the force times the sine of the angle so that is when we are using the triangle that is below the force so we may also decide to use the upper triangle so uh, using the upper triangle then it means we need to find this angle here we know the whole angle will be 90 degrees so this one is 90 minus theta this theta here so follow, following a similar procedure we are able to realize that the upper triangle will also give us this component magnitude of the force times sine of 90 minus the angle that is mixed with the horizontal and f cos 90 minus theta so let's take an example here we are to resolve the force 5 newton in the direction 0 3 0 degrees into its vertical and horizontal components so here is a diagram illustrating it so we have the 30 degrees that it makes with the horizontal then the magnitude of the force is 5 newton so this is the force so we have the horizontal component and the vertical component so we just apply the formula 5 cos theta so the theta is 30 degrees that's what we get here then 5 sine theta that will give us the horizontal component so this is giving us so if you find cos 30 degrees on your scientific calculator you are likely to get this result root 3 over 2 if you don't get this result you can get the equivalent form in a decimal form then also cos sine 30 degrees will give us half so the whole thing will give us 5 root 3 over 2 then 5 over 2 newtons so when the force is written in this form we say we have resolved it into its components both vertical and horizontal and we also call it column form column form column form so you can also use the upper triangle that is you find this angle here which is 60 degrees how do you get it 90 minus 30 we give us 60 so in this case the horizontal component is given by 5 sine 60 and the vertical component is given by 5 cos 60 which will give us the same result so let's take a wasi example which is very similar to this here is a, a wasi question which is similar to what we just did is that given that p is equal to 5 newton in the direction 30 degrees express this in the form ai plus bj where a and b are scalars so a and b are scalars So this is a WASI example. So we just follow the same procedure to resolve the forces into the component form. Just that we have to write the final result in the form AI plus BJ, where A is the horizontal component of the force and B is the vertical component of the force. A is the X component and B is the Y component. So 
the x component is this the y component is this so we write it in this form 5 root 3 over 2i plus 5 over 2j let's take another example we have to resolve the force shown in the diagram below horizontally and vertically so the force is having magnitude of 20 newtons and it's making an angle of 50 degrees with the horizontal so how do we resolve it we use the same formula so here is the horizontal component is given by 20 cos 50 degrees remember f cos theta will give her the horizontal and f sine theta will give us the vertical so the vertical is 20 cos sine 50 so the f here is the magnitude of the force so magnitude of the force is 20 newtons so 20 cos 50 which is 12.9 newton and 20 sine 50 15.3 newton so that is the horizontal and vertical component here is another example we are to express the force having magnitude 20 newtons and in a direction 240 degrees as a column vector here we are going to use two different methods the first method is given by this we just maintain the angle given in the question so the horizontal component is given by 20 cos 240 degrees so remember remember that the components of the force are given by magnitude of the force cos theta then that is the horizontal then the vertical is magnitude of the force sine theta which is the vertical so the theta here is 240 degrees so 20 cos theta the magnitude of the force is 20 newtons so 20 cos 240 degrees which is negative 10 newtons that is the horizontal component then the vertical component is 20 which is the magnitude of the force 20 sine 240 which will give us negative 10 root 3 newtons so writing it as a column vector we have negative 10 negative 10 root 3 newtons and the second method is that we are going to take into consideration the acute angle of the vector in a third quadrant so the vector is in the third quadrant so it makes an angle of 60 degrees with the horizontal now so the horizontal axis it makes an angle of 60 degrees with the horizontal axis because when you travel up to this point you travel 180 degrees so 240 degrees is 60 degrees more than 180 so we take into consideration the sign of this quadrant so we have the x as is here to be negative and the y as is here to be negative so both components will be negative so taking into consideration the angle it makes with the horizontal or in the direction of the x axis we have negative 20 cos 60 the negative here tells us that we are in the third quadrant which is negative 10 newtons so the 60 here is this and we got it from the 240 subtracting it from subtracting 180 from it then the vertical component is negative 20 sine 60 so the negative here is the fact that we are in the third quadrant and sine 60 so that will also give us the same result so we write it in column form as negative 10 and negative 10 root 3 newtons so you can use both methods this will be very quick for you so you can stick to that
then if you can also use this no problem let's take another example resultant of vector so when we are talking about resultant of a vector we are talking about adding two or more vectors so when we add two or more vectors we are referring to the resultant of them so adding two or more vectors is called finding the resultant of them so we can get three vectors when we add all the components together then we are finding their resultant so here's an example a body is acted upon by the forces f1 three newtons in a direction 55 degrees then the second force is 4 newton in a direction of 90 degrees we have to find the magnitude and direction to the nearest degree of the resultant force so note that the individual forces are given to us in the magnitude and direction form so magnitude and direction form magnitude and direction form they are not given to us in the component form or they are not given to us as a column vector column vector so we have to resolve the forces into component form before we add the components so we don't just add the three newton to the four newton to find the resultant we don't also don't just add the 55 degrees to the 90 degrees to find the direction of the resultant force we have to first of all resolve the forces into the column form or the component the horizontal and the vertical component so let's begin resultant force will be equal to the first force and the second force adding the components adding the vectors so we need to find f1 in component form column form and f2 in column form so we apply the formula magnitude of the force cos 60 or that is cos theta then that will be horizontal then vertical will be magnitude of the force sine theta so this will give us the y component and this will give us the x component so that is what we do for the first force the magnitude is 3 newtons and the theta is the direction is theta uh, 55 degrees and the second force the magnitude is 4 degrees and the direction is 90 degrees for the horizontal components so the vertical component to magnitude is 3 newtons and sine 55 4 newtons sine 90 so when you plug in this on your scientific calculator we evaluate to give us this so when we add them our resultant force will have the component 1.7 for the horizontal and 6.5 for the vertical so we can illustrate this in a diagram like this that's the resultant force the y component is 6.5 and the x component is 1.7 so the direction is the angle it makes with the horizontal here now the magnitude is just the, 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 the size of the force so the distance from here to here that's the magnitude and we can find that using Pythagoras theorem so the hypotenuse is the resultant force the magnitude of the resultant force so resultant force squared will be equal to 1.7 squared plus 6.5 squared and that will give us square root of 45.14 and that is equivalent to 6.7 newtons 
So the, the, the magnitude, the magnitude of the resultant force is 6.7 newtons. Now it's left with the direction. So the direction we can also apply trigonometry to find this angle here. You know, we know the opposites and we know the adjacent. So so katoa, we can use tan. So tan theta will be equal to 6.5 over 1.7. So theta will be tan inverse of 3.82 and that will give us 75.33. So to the nearest degree, we have theta equals 75 degrees, 0 0.5, 0 0.75 degrees. So we have the magnitude and the direction form to be 6.7 newton 0.75 degrees. Now, in our next lesson, we'll be talking about triangle of forces and forces in equilibrium. Thanks so much for watching. Come back next time to continue the lesson with us. See you in the next video.